Well, it all started a long time ago. From 2007 to 2008, I used to have a Wii, and the only game I had on it was Star Wars The Clone Wars Lightsaber Duels, which was a pretty good gem. And then during that time, I was introduced to a YouTuber named Sugar Conroy, and he was the very first YouTuber to introduce me to the world of Paper Mario. I didn't own any Paper Mario games back then, but I did actually try out Super Paper Mario from Blockbuster, but sadly went bankrupt a few years later. What got me convinced to play Super Paper Mario was from the other YouTubers during that era. Then eventually I would watch Sugar Conroy's Thousand Year Door videos, and god damn they were really entertaining. All of the Mario enemies looked completely different and had their own personalities which really expanded on the Mario universe. And from the looks of it, of course, Paper Mario Thousand Year Door had a bunch of potential. And I absolutely loved the original three games. I didn't care that much about Paper Mario 64, but Thousand Year Door and Super Paper Mario were pretty much my jam. Then, of course, we would get to the Dark Age. Paper Mario Sticker Star happened, and <laughs> I already know how everyone felt about that game. The game has zero personality but I do love its box art cover and the renders of Paper Mario himself. I even tried to recreate it on paper craft of my own. And yes, back when I was young and still to this day, I create Paper Mario paper crafts and they're really entertaining. I used to have one back in 2016 that I used to carry with me on car trips and it was such a good time. Then Color Splash happened, then Origami Keen a few years later. Now, I heard those games completely separated and divided the Paper Mario fanbase, but as a respectful Paper Mario fan of my own, I'm on both sides and I love all the games just the way they are. I still absolutely dislike Sticker Star and hate that game ever since, but I do respect anyone who enjoys that game and I respect them for it. So yeah, during that time it was quite complicated to be a Paper Mario fan. However, as we move on to this year in the future, we officially got Paper Mario Thousand Year Door, and I think from this point, the fan base can finally calm down now, and like, they can basically like all the games finally. But yeah, I heard a lot of good things about Paper Mario Thousand Year Door, and my twin sister is gonna absolutely love it. And yes, my twin sister absolutely loves the franchise, and I'm really excited for her to try out Thousand Year Door for the first time. The original GameCube versions had some pretty pricey prices on eBay. Some of them are not expensive if you're lucky to find a cheaper one, then today's your lucky day. However, the Switch version is 60 bucks and it's totally worth it. I did hear some people mention that the original version was quote 100 bucks or a lot more expensive. And from my point of view, if I'm accurate, I don't really see it. I do see some prices. Now, the prices go up high, but somehow I'm, on my end, it's not that expensive, surprisingly, thankfully. However, I'm still getting the remake regardless, and I'm betting a ton of people are going to be getting both the digital and the physical version. And that way, they're going to, and I'm betting this game is going to sell a crap ton of copies by the time it's released. I've already pre-ordered the digital version, but I'm definitely going to get the physical version once it's released one week after my birthday. Also, as a bonus lastly, there were two Paper Mario World Flash games, and I absolutely loved these games when I was young, and they bring back so many good memories. And still to this day, you can play them. Thank you. Those games really do bring back good memories.